Tensions in the Middle East have always been a complex web of alliances, hostilities, and unpredictable geopolitical maneuvers. The situation in Israel and its broader neighborhood, however, reached a significant turning point when Russia issued a stern and shocking warning to Israel following Israel's military actions against Hezbollah. The killing of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah further escalated an already volatile situation, with Iran reacting sharply by launching ballistic missiles into Israeli territory. These events have set off a chain reaction, drawing in various global powers, reshaping regional dynamics, and stirring international concerns about a broader conflict that could spill over into a global confrontation. Before we start, smash the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The events leading up to Russia's warning are rooted in the intricate relationships between Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran. Hezbollah, backed by Iran, has long been a thorn in Israel's side, particularly in southern Lebanon, where the militant group operates as a key proxy of Iranian influence. Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general of Hezbollah, had been a central figure in this struggle, overseeing the group's military operations and its continuous threats against Israel. When Israel launched targeted military strikes, purportedly to defend its borders and deter further Hezbollah aggression, it resulted in the unexpected and deadly consequence of Nasrallah's assassination. This was not a typical skirmish or localized conflict. Israel had struck a symbolic blow, not just against Hezbollah but against Iranian influence in the region. Hezbollah's retaliation for Nasrallah's killing was swift and intense. Rocket fire targeted Israel's northern border, while the group's military wings mobilized in anticipation of further confrontation. The assassination of such a prominent figure sent ripples through the entire region. Iran, which had heavily invested in Hezbollah both financially and militarily, interpreted this as a direct assault on its interests. In response, Iran escalated its rhetoric, accusing Israel of destabilizing the region and committing acts of aggression that demanded a proportional response. Iran's response to the death of Nasrallah came not just in words, but in action. Tehran's launch of ballistic missiles toward Israeli targets marked a new and dangerous phase of the conflict. This was not a mere exchange of fire along the Lebanese-Israeli border, but an open confrontation between two powerful Middle Eastern actors. Iran's ballistic missile strike was particularly alarming because it demonstrated Tehran's willingness to project power far beyond its borders, risking a broader conflict that could draw in other global powers, including the United States, which has a long-standing alliance with Israel. While Israeli air defense systems intercepted most of the missiles, the attack sent a clear message. Iran would not stand idly by while its allies and proxies were targeted. This direct escalation also meant that Israel could no longer view Hezbollah's actions in isolation. The conflict was now regional, with multiple state and non-state actors involved. It was no longer just about defending the northern borders, but about maintaining Israel's security and sovereignty in the face of growing Iranian influence. As the conflict continued to unfold, Russia, a major power in the region with close ties to both Iran and Syria, issued a shocking warning to Israel. Moscow, which had carefully balanced its relations in the Middle East, was deeply concerned by the spiraling conflict. Russia's strategic interest in Syria, where it had helped prop up the Assad regime, meant that it could not afford to see Israel's military actions destabilize the region further. For years, Russia had cultivated a unique role in the Middle East, positioning itself as a power broker that could maintain relations with both Israel and Iran. When Russia issued its warning to Israel, it was a clear signal that Moscow was willing to intervene, diplomatically or militarily, to prevent the situation from escalating further. Russia's message was as much about protecting its interests in the region as it was about preventing a broader conflict. Moscow's leverage over both Iran and Hezbollah made its warning all the more significant. The prospect of Russia, a nuclear-armed superpower, taking a more active role in the conflict, was a sobering development for Israel and its Western allies. The Russian warning carried multiple implications. First, it highlighted the growing complexity of the conflict, where local skirmishes could have global consequences. The involvement of Russia added another layer of risk, as any miscalculation by Israel or its enemies could provoke a much larger confrontation. Second, it raised questions about the future of Israel's relationship with Russia, 
Although the two countries had managed to maintain a relatively stable relationship despite their differences over Syria and Iran, the latest escalation strained that relationship. Israel now had to contend with the possibility that its actions could not only provoke Iran, but also alienate Russia, a country that had significant sway in the region. The ballistic missile attack by Iran and the subsequent Russian response also brought into focus the delicate balance of power in the Middle East. For years, Israel had relied on its military superiority, particularly its air force and missile defense systems, to maintain security. But the evolving dynamics of the conflict suggested that this might not be enough to deter future attacks or prevent a larger regional war. Iran's missile capabilities, combined with Hezbollah's ground forces and Russia's diplomatic weight, presented a formidable challenge. Russia's warning was also a reminder of the broader geopolitical implications of the conflict. The Middle East has always been a theater for larger powers to assert their influence, and the latest escalation underscored how regional conflicts could draw in global actors. The involvement of Russia and the United States, each backing different sides, raised the specter of a proxy war, with the risk that a localized conflict could spiral into something much larger and more destructive. Furthermore, Russia's warning to Israel emphasized the importance of diplomacy in resolving the conflict. While military action might offer short-term solutions, the long-term security of the region depended on finding political solutions. Russia, with its influence in Tehran and Damascus, positioned itself as a potential mediator in the conflict. Moscow's message to Israel was not just a warning about the dangers of escalation, but also a call for restraint and dialogue. For Israel, Russia's involvement complicated an already difficult situation. While the country had to defend its borders and respond to provocations from Hezbollah, it now had to weigh its actions more carefully, knowing that further escalations could bring in powerful international actors. The killing of Nasrallah and the subsequent Iranian missile strike had set off a chain reaction that was no longer confined to the local dynamics of the Israeli-Hezbollah conflict. Iran's ballistic missile strike marked a turning point in its engagement with Israel. By directly attacking Israeli targets, Iran signaled that it was willing to escalate the conflict beyond proxy warfare. This move challenged Israel's traditional strategy of relying on superior military technology to deter attacks. The missile strikes exposed vulnerabilities in Israel's defense systems and raised the possibility that future conflicts could involve even more advanced missile technology potentially overwhelming Israel's defenses. The involvement of Russia also raised concerns about the broader implications for Israeli foreign policy. Israel had long relied on the support of the United States in its confrontations with regional adversaries, but Russia's growing influence in the region forced Israel to consider a more nuanced approach. The possibility of a confrontation with a global superpower like Russia made it clear that Israel could no longer rely solely on military strength. Diplomacy and careful maneuvering would be essential in navigating the complexities of the new regional landscape. In addition, Russia's warning to Israel exposed the fragility of alliances in the Middle East. While Israel had cultivated relationships with several regional actors, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, the escalation with Hezbollah and Iran tested the limits of these alliances. Countries like Saudi Arabia, which have their own concerns about Iranian influence, were likely watching the situation closely, trying to gauge how far they would go in supporting Israel without provoking further regional instability. Russia's involvement also underscored the limitations of Israel's relationship with the United States. While Washington has been a steadfast ally of Israel, the growing influence of Russia in the region presented a challenge. The United States, preoccupied with other global priorities, might not be willing or able to confront Russia directly over its involvement in the conflict. This created a new strategic dilemma for Israel, which had to balance its military objectives with the need to avoid alienating its most important ally. The killing of Hassan Nasrallah and Iran's ballistic missile strike also raised questions about the future of Hezbollah as an organization. Nasrallah had been the face of Hezbollah for decades, and his death created a power vacuum within the organization. While Hezbollah was likely to continue its operations against Israel, the loss of its leader could lead to internal divisions or a shift in strategy. Iran, as Hezbollah's primary backer, would likely play a key role in determining the group's future direction. 
However, Nasrallah's death was also a blow to Iranian prestige, as it highlighted the vulnerability of its proxies in the region. Iran's decision to launch ballistic missiles at Israel following the assassination of Nasrallah also had broader implications for its relationship with the rest of the world. Tehran's willingness to escalate the conflict so directly could further isolate it on the international stage, particularly in light of ongoing tensions over its nuclear program. While Iran might have seen the missile strike as a necessary show of strength, it risked provoking a stronger response from Israel or its Western allies. The potential for further escalation loomed large, with neither side willing to back down. The heightened tensions between Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran following the death of Hassan Nasrallah and the subsequent Iranian missile attacks present a situation fraught with deep geopolitical implications. The conflict has drawn attention from world powers, notably Russia, which issued a stark warning to Israel, signaling its concern over further escalation. In this context, the wider political, military, and strategic ramifications go beyond the borders of Israel and Lebanon, impacting global diplomacy, security arrangements, and regional alliances in ways that are both immediate and long-term. Iran's ballistic missile launch also highlights the growing sophistication of its military capabilities. Although Israel's missile defense systems, particularly the Iron Dome, were able to intercept the majority of the missiles, the sheer scale and audacity of Iran's attack brought into focus the potential for future conflicts to overwhelm even the most advanced defense systems. In a region where missile technology is rapidly advancing, Israel's security strategies must evolve to address the reality of not only conventional warfare, but also the threat posed by ballistic missiles and other advanced weaponry from state actors like Iran. Furthermore, the involvement of Russia adds another layer of complexity to an already intricate situation. Russia's strategic interests in Syria and its alliance with Iran mean that it has a vested interest in preventing further destabilization of the region. Russia's presence in Syria has been a critical factor in bolstering the Assad regime and, by extension, maintaining Iranian influence in the Levant. Any further military actions by Israel, particularly if they involve Iranian targets in Syria, could directly challenge Russia's authority and influence in the region. The nature of Russia's warning to Israel was multifaceted. First, it served as a deterrent, signaling that any further Israeli military actions could prompt a reaction from Moscow. Second, it underscored Russia's desire to position itself as a mediator in the Middle East, a role that has become increasingly important as the U.S. has scaled back its direct involvement in the region. By issuing a warning to Israel, Russia aimed to assert its influence and reaffirm its role as a key player in the balance of power in the Middle East. Russia's role in the region is particularly important when considering its relationship with Iran. Tehran's reliance on Russian support has been instrumental in its ability to project power across the region, particularly in Syria. With Moscow's backing, Iran has been able to maintain its presence in the Levant and support groups like Hezbollah, which serve as important tools for expanding Iranian influence. In turn, Russia benefits from Iran's destabilizing activities in the region because they create a justification for Russia's own military presence, particularly in Syria. Thus, Russia's warning to Israel can be interpreted as an effort to preserve the status quo, which benefits both Russia and Iran strategically. The broader regional implications of the conflict are profound. The killing of Nasrallah, Iran's missile strikes, and Russia's involvement all point to a growing convergence of interest between Tehran and Moscow, particularly in their opposition to Israeli actions. While Russia has previously maintained a delicate balance in its relations with Israel, the latest developments signal a potential shift. Moscow's warning could be a sign that it is prepared to distance itself from Israel in order to maintain stronger ties with Iran, especially as Tehran becomes more assertive in its actions. In this evolving landscape, the dynamics between Israel and its neighbors also shift. Hezbollah's response to Nasrallah's death, along with Iran's ballistic missile strike, creates a situation where other regional actors are forced to reconsider their positions. Countries like Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states, which have historically supported Israel's opposition to Iranian influence, are now watching closely to see how the conflict unfolds. While these countries share Israel's concerns about Iranian power, they are also wary of becoming embroiled in a direct conflict that could destabilize the region even further. This creates a dilemma for Israel's regional allies, 
On one hand, they want to see Iran's influence curtailed, particularly in places like Syria and Lebanon, where Iranian-backed groups have taken on increasingly powerful roles. On the other hand, a direct military confrontation with Iran, especially one that draws in Russia, would pose significant risks to regional stability. The potential for such a conflict to spread beyond Israel's borders, dragging other regional players into the fray, is a scenario that most Middle Eastern governments would prefer to avoid. The potential for a broader conflict is further exacerbated by the role of the United States in the region. Historically, Washington has been Israel's most important ally, providing military, economic, and diplomatic support in the face of regional threats. However, the growing influence of Russia and the direct military involvement of Iran challenge the traditional dynamics of U.S. involvement in the Middle East. Washington now faces a difficult decision, how to support Israel in its conflict with Hezbollah and Iran without risking a broader confrontation with Russia. This situation presents the U.S. with several strategic options, none of which are without risks. One option is for Washington to provide Israel with increased military support, including advanced missile defense systems and other defensive technologies. However, this could provoke a stronger reaction from Iran and potentially escalate the conflict further, particularly if Tehran sees U.S. involvement as a direct threat. Another option is for the U.S. to pursue diplomatic channels, encouraging Israel to engage in negotiations with Hezbollah and Iran. However, this approach could be seen as a sign of weakness, both by Israel and by its regional allies. The United States also faces the challenge of managing its relationship with Russia in the context of this conflict. While the U.S. and Russia have clashed over numerous issues in recent years, including Ukraine, Syria, and cyber attacks, the situation in the Middle East presents a unique challenge. The risk of a direct military confrontation between U.S. forces and Russian forces in Syria or elsewhere is a real concern, particularly if the conflict between Israel and Iran continues to escalate. Washington must balance its support for Israel with its desire to avoid a broader conflict that could draw in other major powers. In the broader context of international diplomacy, the conflict between Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran is likely to have far-reaching implications. The involvement of Russia, the United States, and other global powers highlights the fact that the Middle East remains a central arena for geopolitical competition. The region's strategic importance, both in terms of energy resources and as a crossroads for global trade, ensures that any conflict there will have ripple effects across the world. One of the most significant potential consequences of the conflict is the risk of further destabilization in Syria. The Assad regime, which has relied heavily on support from both Russia and Iran, is already weakened by years of civil war. A broader conflict involving Israel, Hezbollah, and Iran could lead to further fragmentation of the Syrian state, creating new opportunities for extremist groups to gain a foothold in the region. This, in turn, could exacerbate the refugee crisis, putting additional pressure on neighboring countries in Europe. The possibility of a wider conflict also raises concerns about the future of Iraq. With a fragile government and a complex political landscape, Iraq could easily be drawn into the conflict, particularly given its proximity to both Iran and Syria. Iranian-backed militias in Iraq, which have played a key role in the fight against ISIS, could be mobilized to support Hezbollah or engage in direct attacks on Israeli or U.S. interests in the region. This would further destabilize Iraq, which is still recovering from years of war and internal strife. Another important consideration is the potential impact on global energy markets. The Middle East is home to some of the world's largest oil reserves, and any disruption to the flow of oil from the region could have significant consequences for the global economy. A broader conflict involving Israel, Iran, and Russia could lead to a spike in oil prices, particularly if key shipping routes, such as the Strait of Hormuz, are disrupted. This would have a direct impact on global energy markets, potentially leading to economic instability in countries that rely heavily on oil imports. Moreover, the conflict has the potential to affect international alliances and power structures. Countries like China, which has growing economic interests in the Middle East, will be watching closely to see how the situation develops. China's Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to create a new network of trade routes across the region, could be affected by any instability in the Middle East. 
As a result, Beijing may seek to play a more active role in mediating the conflict, potentially positioning itself as a new power broker in the region. Europe, too, has a vested interest in the outcome of the conflict. The European Union has been heavily involved in efforts to negotiate a nuclear deal with Iran, and the current escalation threatens to derail those efforts. A broader conflict could also lead to new waves of refugees, particularly if fighting intensifies in Lebanon, Syria, or Iraq. This would put additional pressure on European governments, many of which are already grappling with the political and social challenges of previous refugee crises. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us, what are your thoughts on Iran's missile launch at Israel? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.